Yeah, I know, I know, Doc. I know, but I still don't feel right. I think my, yeah, I've still got pains in my heart. I think I aged about 20 years. Did you not see that goal line clearance? Did you not? Well, take a look at this. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the latest cup final. And boy, oh boy, the past two games, I tell you, the past two games have not been easy viewing as a Rovers fan. Anyway, Rovers picked up a 1-0 home win against Southend. We'll talk about that match in just one second. But if you're new, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, Danny, when he scores when he wants, Graham got the only goal and it was bang on 59 minutes uh, in a game that we we nearly threw it away. Uh, I think I, I just chucked in a cheeky wee gif at the start of the uh, start of the show, showing that mad goal line clearance. And there was there was plenty more of that in the second half as Rovers tried to sit back. Well, I don't know if they were trying to sit back, but they tried to defend that one 0 lead. And boy, oh boy, if that result had changed and we actually picked only a point, or even if we had managed to suffer a defeat, oh my goodness, that last back end of the season could have been very very much. Completely different. But right now, as it stands, we are four points clear of third place Shrewsbury. And we've played exactly the same amount of games. Shrewsbury are in, uh, what is it, FA Trophy or something. Some other so a Football League Trophy award game thing that's on tomorrow. So they are out of League One action for a little bit. But most important, we did get the goal. Let's take a look at the match in a little bit more detail with some statistics. So the BBC have Blackburn Rovers with 52% possession compared to 48 by Southend. Eight shots for Rovers, nine for Southend. Four shots on target for Rovers as two for Southend. Uh, six corners, seven for Southend. And equal fouls, 12 apiece. Let's take a look at the start 11. First and foremost, Ryan Gold, Bennett, down to Goldberg, Williams, Smallwood, Evans, Armstrong, Conway, Dak and Graham. And yes, Dak did actually start the game. But he was off, brought off very early. So I'm just changing up a little bit. Here's the, uh, the, the team that played the majority of the game. I stuck Payne in there because I'm going to give him a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a talking to at the minute. Here we go. Here's my match ratings for the, for the players. Ryan got an 8. Ben got an 8. Downing got a 6. Mogul got a 7. Williams got a 6. Small got a 7. Evans got a 7. Armstrong with a 6. Payne with a 6. Conway with a 7. And Graham with an 8. Now I am being overly uh, kind to Payne because... Um, to be honest with you, usually the defenders get a lot of my flack, but I, I cannot, I cannot for the life of me defend Jack Payne anymore. You know, this was his moment to shine for me. He had pretty much 80 minutes to, to, to do, to do something in a Rover shirt. And there was about seven or eight times that he, he looked very weak on the ball. And to be honest with you, I know he was on loan with Oxford earlier to be honest with you I'd rather I'd rather be playing someone else in that role than Payne at the moment he's this was his chance for me to to really stake a claim you know Dak key figurehead for us uh, and I know he was brought off as a precaution but um, the replacement Payne completely worthless you know there was a moment and it was being quoted on the BRFCS forum um, and I saw it with my own eyes. There was a everyone's talking about the Zlatan or the the overhead kick by Ronaldo uh, midweek. Payne tries to do an overhead kick in our danger area to get rid of the ball. What is that all about? That the moments like that should be calm and composed. You should be just getting your boot on it, not like that, not in a ridiculous kind of form. He, he doesn't even get a foot on it. Doesn't even get a foot on it. It's a completely risky. Uh, situation and if that had gone wrong and the ball ended up in the back of the net people will be people will be after his balls on a plate uh, so he needs to realize the situation the 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 line the, the 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 scale of error for rovers right now is minimal we cannot afford to slip up it's too tight at the top we've not got like a 10 point lead maybe we can afford to be a little bit footloose and fancy free but right now we've got to play you know a, a, a simple game just get rid of the ball and again, towards the end of the game, he had an opportunity to kill. You know, there was it, it was trying to waste time in the corner flag, and he just scuffs away possession. Uh, and again, Southend come away with an, a, a decent attack and could have threatened with another goal. I think maybe that was even part of the the process where we where we had to clear the ball off the line with Mulgrew and Raya. And I tell you what, Raya has been immense these past two games with some super duper saves, keeping us 
in this title race. It's only two point lead at the moment with Wigan. Wigan do have one game in hand. So technically, if they were to win that, they would be 86 points. But first and foremost, they've got to win that. They did a bit of damage today against MK Downs. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's take a look at the start in 11 4. Our visitors south end before I keep going into the game. Oxley and Gold, Dimitri, White, Turner, Coker, McLaughlin, Yearwood, Timlin, Knightley, uh, Mantum and Cox. It might not have been in that formation, but that was the starting 11. Obviously, uh, Kitely was given a right hostile welcome at Ewood Park. Obviously, the ex-Burnley man. And they didn't, they didn't play in this pink outfit. Uh, I think that might have been an outfit from last season. I don't know. They played in... Uh, some other kind of jerseys. I can't, I can't remember now because I'm still envisaging that overhead kick by Jack Payne. And I tell you, he has his fans out there. People keep wanting to stick him in the start 11. But come on. He has no, I haven't seen him do anything decent in a Rover shirt, to be honest with you. He might have had a, a couple key passes. But those key passes are, you know, they are less than the amount of goals Dominic Samuel has. You know, he's got eight goals or whatever it is. I don't know. I, I'm running. I have completely... I, I'm lost for words for Jack Payne and his performances in, in a Rover shirt. I know he has talent, but the, his decision making is poor. His his effort off the ball is pretty toothless. Um, anyway, I, I'm getting on a rant on Jack Payne. Let's talk more about the performances. But anyway, let's take a look at the League One results uh, for the day's play. Obviously, the big one that we're talking about besides Rover's game is the Wigan Athletic. Home destruction of MK Dons. They won 5-1. I think Will Grigg did get a hat-trick. I think even Powell's on the score sheet there. GB's Bowyer. What a performance. Now, that's probably the performance of the day. Beating uh, Bradford City. I guess you could probably write off their playoff chases, uh, playoff dreams right now, Bradford City, for this season. Um, who do we play next? I think it's Gillingham. They were held to a 0-0 draw at home against Doncaster. Down at the bottom, AFC Wimbledon picked up a 1-1 draw. Plymouth Argyle uh, kept up their playoff uh, dreams with a 2-1 home win over Peterborough and Rochdale were held to a 3-3 draw against Pompey at Spotland. So the table looks like this on the right hand side. Rovers still with a two-point lead over Wigan and a four-point, yes, four-point lead over Shrewsbury with the same amount of games played. As for the bottom, uh, Berry rock bottom, Northampton there, MK Dons and Rochdale. Rochdale do have at least one game in hand on Wimbledon. They do have two games in hand on some of the other teams at the bottom. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What did the gap have to say shortly after the final whistle? Um, well, <laughs> listen, ultimately we're happy with the three points. That's all that matters. It wasn't our most fluent performance of the season at home. Um, credit to South End came and made it really difficult and not a lot to play for, sitting in the middle of the table. And um, Yeah, first half was a non-event really, which is really frustrating because we've got so much to play for and yet the dressing room were ready before the game it was just the way the game panned out then it gets a bit nervous we scored a goal and and that nervousness is still there hoping that we can hang on to it and obviously that ball bouncing around our six yard box in the last minute in injury time was a bit scary but we're here we got three points we put them in the bag we move on oh god um listen you have to trust your team you do your work you do your preparation you um we know how we're going to play, we know the expectation of, of intensity that we need to find and and then you send them on the pitch and you have to trust them to get the job done and uh, you know, here we are, we, we did get the job done, we won 1-0, one we got three points, we've won 25 games this season and we, um, we've got six left, we've got to go and try and win as many of them as we can. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, in my mind that was sorted three or four weeks ago, it might not have been mathematically but teams, you know, I don't know, four or five teams below us aren't all going to win every game it's um our only target is to finish in the top two we'd love to finish right at the top i think you know we think wigan um continue to win games as, as we've been doing um shrewsbury got a cup final tomorrow at wembley it, uh, but our games are now level with them with four points in front of them it's you know we have to keep going and keep putting the pressure on they have to win football matches now every week um Let's let's see if we can finish the season off as we all want to do it, and yet we can see how difficult it is. There's no easy game. So whoever you're playing, um, people scrapping and fighting to get into a playoff position, people scrapping to stay out the bottom four. Uh, but we played a team with little to play for today, and yet they can see how hard it is. So we just have to keep trying to grind it out, um, and hope our big players can perform and we win football matches. We've got a big tough week now. We've got two games on the road, a lot of travelling to do, and yet we look forward to going. Going away from home, we've won a lot of games away from home. We've um, asked lots of questions of teams who, who, who try to come on to us and press on to us. So, um, 
you know, we we carry a threat, a goal threat, and you know, we've got to look forward to these two games on the road this week. Yeah, that's it's a position we work a lot on in training of where you score goals, what type of balls you've got to put into the box when we got teams pinned back. I think, you know, as I said, he, a minute or two earlier, he'd had a shot edge of the box that we created well on a cutback for him and normally rams them into the net because he's so clinical, keeper made a save, but um, delighted that he's keeps, you know, grinding away at it, really. He's, he's in the right positions, the, a great ball from Craig, who's had to be really patient this last few months, and yet he... Started today and made the goal, and um, you know those experienced players. You know, we are going to have to call on them over yeah. the next three or four weeks. <laughs> um, God, listen, what I always say when I get asked questions like that, it, it doesn't matter really. I, I'm standing here. The results in the bag. No one's going to go back and give any penalties. We all got our opinion. I thought the referee did all right today. Mm. Um, if anything, he, he didn't want to make some decisions, did he? And, and so that's why probably some penalties that could have been penalties with another official out there. It, it, he just let the game roll and get on with it and ran off to the halfway line waving play on so um doesn't matter to me it is what it is you get some you you lose some it um as you said there was a couple of penalty calls either side he didn't give any of them and we won one nil i have a little bit what the gaffers had to say but a little bit what i've had to say what have the fans and the players been saying uh shortly after the final whistle elliot bennett put out this tweet massive three points today at this stage of the season points are the most important thing anyone else need to lie down after the last scramble in the box Thanks for the backing until the end. Derek Williams, not the best performance today, but all that matters at this stage is those three points. Buzzing with a clean sheet as well. Thanks to the fans that came out today. Keep us going. On to the next now. Jack Payne, my best mate. Good to get three points in a difficult game. Top support all round. Go get yourself uh, a lollipop, Jack Payne. Anyway, David Raya said this very tough game, but we got the result in the end. Fans were outstanding once again. We go again Tuesday. As for some of the fans, Mike Dallat said this. I'm not sure if Rhodes are aware of this, but I pref preferably like to die in my old age, quietly in my bed, having lived a full life. Not at 33, having suffered multiple heart attacks. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Becky said this. Thought my heart was actually going to stop watching that. Another big three points. We're on our way. Ian Anthony. Whoever put the, the body on the line to clear that late South End effort deserves to be first in line for the promotion party. As for talk of Ewood. Didn't half make hard work of that. Big win though, especially with Lenehan and Dak missing. Breathing space between us and Shrewsbury now. Get in. As for Russell Prescott. David Ryer. Different gravy at shot stopping. Unreal. Michaela. Uh, said this, it's never easy, is it? My heart didn't beat in those last five minutes. As for Paul Reed, just doing what we have to do to get over the line, never in doubt. Well, that's somebody who has got confidence. But meanwhile, over the BRFCS forum, if you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. Great opportunity for to talk to fellow Rovers fans, just like this guy. 1864 Roverite said this, job done, move on. Yes, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't total football, and South End played a good game, straggling. Rovers through the middle. Didn't matter. One piece of class was all that was needed. Rest up and it's on to Kent again. Meanwhile, Davos Sukha said this. Full time. Phew. Sounds like Rhea pulled us out the fire at the death. Yes, he did. As Philip L said this. Phew. Once again, we protected that lead and take another huge step towards automatic promotion. Gavala, Somerset, Rovar. We got away with that one out there. Need to seriously up our game for the run if we're going to ensure that we stay in the top two. Huge three uh, three points though. Got to pray that Dak is all right and get Dara back in the back fitish, fit sharpish. Also, another couple of uh, points gained by Raya there too. Just remember that some of you. As for two guys, right foot. Phew! Another game win. Got. Gotta catch my breath. Exhausted from this game. I thought Downing was magnificent for us and Ryan's handling has been great. Given so much more confidence. But anyway, West York's Rover. Well, folks, that's an incredible one defeat in 29 games, but that's got to be the luckiest, surely. Eight wins in 10-2. Think I'm saying it right? Or oh, words, words of that effect. Anyway, Tom said this. Celebrate that clearance at the end more than the goal. Absolute turning point stuff. We all know that it was going, going in and somehow it didn't. We played like a team hoping to avoid relegation, then a win, a league, but job done just. As for Doxy said this, as we move on, that tension is just going to keep increasing in our play. Just make our game changes invaluable. I'm off to sit in a dark room and go full on Uri Geller on Dax Strain Heel. Uh, Blue Boy 33333, I generally felt ill 
by that in the end. As for Tom, I think he's already been here. Samuel was far more effective than Antonson, by the way. Not many vintage performances, but Bennett was simply phenomenal. If Jack Payne tries an overhead kick on the edge of our box again, he needs a kick in the penis. Uh, I, 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 I mentioned that earlier, and uh, yeah, I'm 100% I'm behind you, Tom. Uh, yeah, he's... Obviously, when Jack Payne arrived, I was I, I got caught up in the in enthusiasm with it because I you know he scored that goal against us when he was on Oxford's books. But to be honest with you, he's been a frustrating player to have at the moment. I don't know if he's trying to be Dak or he's trying to do. Uh, I, I don't know if the pressure's getting on his on his case a little bit because he's here and he's not really, you know, gelled in. Um, I think what needs to improve is his his uh, effort. If he wants to be a decent football, he's got to make make he's got to run for every sinking ball and not just give you know fleeting moments of magic. He needs to be. If you can't deliver the magic, deliver deliver some effort, deliver some passion, deliver some deliver something that's going to get you noticed. Because right now you're getting noticed for doing crazy shit like over the head kicks uh, in whilst you're defending. Come on, boy, you're not in the prem. Anyway, Arbitro said this: "Strap yourself in. It's going to be a bumpy." That was arguably the worst three home performances of the season. But the result, without a shadow of a doubt, was the most important thing. And the relief at the end was there for all of us to see. Defensively, we were okay. But our midfield was dominated by the visitors. And we didn't show too much in attack. The strength of Ryle was there for all to see today. His reflexes are up there with the best. And his double save at the end might be folklore in years to come. One real concern was how Evans and Small were blowing out of the orifices with 20 minutes to go. We desperately need the legs of Bennett in there. And if Nyambi isn't fit, Travis to play right back. Uh, we need to lick our wounds and get to the next game at Gillingham where I think we will play. Uh, we'll be better suited to get a result. I bloody hope so. I bloody hope so. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Uh, yes, the games are still coming thick and fast. And in fact, it's a slam-packed April. I'll be back before you know it, talking about the uh, Gillingham game within 24 hours. So make sure you check out that uh, preview. I've already done one preview, but that game got canned. But we'll have to do it again. You have to come back and check that new one out. Um, because there are talking points, different team selections, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to get myself a lie down because I'm absolutely knackered and drained and very, very, very woozy after that last five minutes of the match. It's been, it's been a roller coaster thus far, but it just keeps on coming. Uh, and hopefully we can get another three points the next time we meet, which is at Gillingham anyway. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Well, folks, I'm back once again with another, yes, another channel update. It's only been a couple of months since we've reached the 700 subscriber threshold, but we have surpassed the 1,000 subscriber mark. So a big, big thank you to all the new guys who have just jumped on board, but also a massive, massive, massive thank you to some of the original guys who've been here since the get-go. Really appreciate you guys sticking around, and I do hope that I am keeping you entertained and factually informed that's right uh to be honest with you nothing's going to change with the channel except um we're just we, i'm actually focusing on some real big projects at the moment uh, a real interesting world cup uh project that is involving multiple multiple people hopefully those people will stick by me and uh come through in the end because if so it can be really interesting um so realistically the, the future plans are still the same. We're still going to keep up with the Blackburn Rovers content because that's what I love. Uh, and also we're focusing on some football manager stuff. That's dried up a little bit because I've been involved with this World Cup project. It does take a lot of time behind the scenes to get things going. And with, there's also, also some other stuff been going on off camera. So that's that's kind of taken its toll a little bit. Uh, and also we're going to kick on forward with the world football. So if you have recently subscribed because of the stickers, I'm going to keep on playing through the stickers until I, at, at least until I complete the sticker album. So what else have I got for you? I, I was also thinking that maybe, just maybe, depending on you guys out there, if if we want to do a Q&A session, if you guys have got any questions, if, if I can reach 10 different questions from yourselves in the comments section below or via my Twitter feed, uh, we will do a Q&A video. And that means you can ask me anything about Blackburn Rovers. You can ask me anything about my football manager, anything about world football. And you can maybe, just maybe, ask me a couple of personal questions. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what comes through the old uh, filter system. Um, 
But yeah, if you want to do that, I will do that gladly. And I'll give you guys until maybe 10, 10 days, two weeks. We'll see where we are then. And then we'll, uh, we'll check back and maybe do a Q&A video. Also, uh, like I said, we're working on a World Cup project. I am on the lookout for some World Cup football fans from countries from around the world. If you are said football fan from around the, around the world, maybe if you're in Russia, maybe if you're in Senegal, maybe you're in Australia, Wherever you are in the world, just drop a little comment down in the section below, and especially if you want to be part of this project. It does require being on camera, but uh, I don't want to talk, don't want to give too much away because it is it's, it's requiring a lot of hard work, and I don't want it to slip through my fingers right at the end. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for you. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new and you've stumbled on this channel by accident, hit the subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, all things World Cup 2018, and also all things Football Manager, baby. That's right. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.